card. Okay. In theory, I think we're recorded, or you're re we're recording now. So, hello everybody. My name is Michelle Cummings. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna go. If I do stop share, I think it just goes straight back to me. Okay. So, my name is Michelle Cummings. I own and operate Training Wheels. And Training Wheels, we're a portable team building company. I started Training Wheels 20 years ago when I couldn't find a job that I liked, so I made one up. I thought, you know, I'm pretty good at making up games and making up, uh, you know, creating curriculum and things like that for groups around team building. And so I thought, well, if I can't, uh, I can't, if I couldn't find a job that I liked, I'll just make one up. So, and I've created several games and activities in the team building field. So I thought uh, maybe I'll make up a job and maybe it'll work for me. So. Training Wheels is now 21 years old, and so I'm finally old enough to drink, or at least my company is. And, uh, you know, and so Training Wheels, I chose the metaphor of the training wheel for my company name because I love that metaphor, that you really only use training for just a little bit, like when we were learning how to ride bikes. And then after that, it's up to you to take what you've learned and own it. And that really is at the core of all of the, the work that I do is that I'm usually only with a group for a really short period of time. And then it's up to them to figure out how do I, how do I take what I've learned and put it into play. So, so today that really this last, you know, as soon as the world went completely virtual, um, trying to help spread the, the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus, then um, all of a sudden, all of us that usually do in-person work have been forced to figure out how we do this online. So that's what today is going to be about is um, I've been working really hard for the last week. It's, it was interesting. I've never lost so much work all at one time, but yet been so busy. So, uh, so really trying to figure out how do we take what we do, keeping people connected and doing what we usually do in person, how do we do it online? So that's what today is going to be about. I, uh, if you haven't downloaded the document yet, there is a download. Um, if you open up your chat box, uh, make sure you have that open and then you can ask questions in there. Um, Cheryl Rodriguez is my um, assistant, my office manager. She is on the chat box as well. She will keep posting that link so that way uh, people have it. All you have to do is type your name and your email address in there and it should instantly populate. And if you also get my team building newsletter, um, there was a direct link in there as well. So, so, um, so kind of the structure of what we're going to do is um, through this handout, there's 30 games in that handout. We're going to walk through pretty much all 30 of them. I think there's only a handful of them that are kind of like, now you kind of know what to do because they're kind of like some of the other ones. And, and some of them I'll dive really deep in and, and show how to do it. Others will just be kind of high level overview. Um, this is, um, you know, let me see here, let me, so let me dive in now and into my PowerPoint screen here and share that. So kind of the structure of what we're going to be doing is, um, so, um, so again, follow the document link um, in the chat box to get that. And then if you have any questions, put them in the chat box and, uh, and then hopefully, um, I, if I don't see them right away, um, then um, keep posting them if I miss them. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I have my chat box open so that way I can um, see them chat. There we go. Where is my chat box? Oops. <laughs> okay, when I have my, there it is. Okay, cool. Let me put it where I can see it. Excellent. All right, so um, my, the intent behind um, this particular uh, presentation is uh, I'm not going to do a full Zoom tutorial. I know that this platform is new for a lot of people, and it was new for me um, about six months ago is when I first started using it a little bit. And so, but we're going to need you to use your Zoom navigation bar throughout the presentation. So you need to locate the, anno uh, the annotate section. So, um, so either it's at the top or bottom of your screen, one of the two, and there'll be some options. And then you'll see here, there is an annotate button. So that's what you need to make sure that you know how to find to do a few of the activities that we're gonna do, okay? So, um, and then also once you get into the annotate section, we're gonna use this arrow button here um, before, um, look, I see people totally trying it out. That's awesome. This arrow button here, we're going to use quite a bit. There's John Losey using that arrow. And the reason why I love using that arrow button is that it will put the name of the person in the arrow. So you totally know who is, um, who's using it. And that will be really helpful when we go to do different activities here in a little while. 
Okay, there's also the stamp button here, which you could use for different things as well. I love it. Everyone's totally um, using that. That's awesome. So, um, so okay, here's what we're going to do next. And then, um, so that's that. So how our time, let me go in and um, I'm going to go in. Oops. And, oops, and share, not that. I, under my annotation bar, I'm going to clear all your stuff, okay? Clear all your drawings. Um, so stop playing with that for a little while, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Okay, so, okay, so how our time is going to be structured. We are going to, uh, it is recorded, and so that way several people had emailed and said, hey, I can't be there during that time. Can you please, uh, can you please go ahead and um, record it so that way I can um, make sure that I get a chance to see the content later. So we are definitely going to do that. And then, um, and then after that, oops. showing the annotating, showing where, the annotating. To find it. where to find it. Okay. So in the annotation, um, if you want to find the annotation, so um, the navigation bar for some people, it's at the top of the screen for other people, it's at the, it's at the bottom of the screen. So you're going to look for the view options and look for the annotate button. And, uh, and then we're going to, we're going to be using the arrow button yeah. and, let's see here. and the arrow button and the stamp button. You don't need to use them right now, but that just know where they are because when we do go to use them, that'll be important. Uh, all right. Give everyone a few moments to play with that for a second before we move on. <laughs> It's so fun, all this new technology, right? And then I have the master button where I can actually clear all your drawings, right? Just like that, magic, right? All right, I'm gonna ask you to stop clicking the buttons for a moment, and we are going to um, move on to our next thing, okay? All right. Okay, so. All right, here we go. So let me go back and just clear a few. You also can clear your drawings if you want to as well. Okay, so we are going to record it. Uh, we're going to get through as many games possible in 90-ish minutes. Um, and then again, if you need to duck out because you've got other things to do, then you can and you can always come back. I'll, I'll post the link in every all the places that I um, that I did the, where I posted this, so then I will go in and I will also um, make sure that the link is posted there as well. All right. All right, so we're gonna start out with a bunch of icebreaker activities, and I think there's maybe 10 or so in the handout, so we're gonna go through most of, most of them, because a lot of them are different from one another, and I'll show you some of the features and things like that uh, that you can do with it. So one thing that you can do is, um, you know, important with icebreakers, is to just create slides that have different icebreaker prompts in them. Um, we have a uh, Pinterest page where all, most of the graphics that are in the um, in this document or in you know in the handout are also on our Pinterest page. So if you want to go um, and Cheryl will post a link to that in the chat box, then um, all the graphics I purposely didn't brand these um, with my with the Training Wheels brand, so that way then you can just freely go and use those and um, and um, use them on your own slides, put them in your own slide decks, that's totally fine. Um, so, because one thing I think it's important for us to make sure that we understand is that experiential and team building activities are designed with the intent behind creating connection before content and experiential programs are generally very outcome based. And so it's important that we, um, that we Keep that in mind while we're moving to the this virtual platform is that that we want to make sure that we keep people connected and remember why we're doing what we're doing so um so connection before content keep that in mind um also you can so if you if you have something like this up on your screen you can um invite participants to take turns um, answering the questions if you've got a small group answering the icebreaker prompts if you have a large group then you can send them into breakout rooms and things like that for a few minutes um, and then have them come out and so it just kind of depends on how many people you have um, in your 
on your virtual meeting, whether you want to do ever take the time for everybody to answer those or maybe one or two of them, or you can send everybody into breakout rooms and let them um, do it themselves. All right, so um, the next activity. So again, we're going to kind of high level overview some of them. We're not necessarily going to do all of them. That way we can get to as many as possible. So the uh, penny for your thoughts activity. This is one that I've done often where um, usually if I'm in with a, a group, I just ask people to look into their, into their um, pockets. And um, I'm gonna actually, I wonder if there's a way for me to turn off, probably not, um, clear all drawings. I don't know if there's a way to freeze that or not, but uh, don't push buttons for a little bit. All right, so um, when I was doing this live and in person, I would ask, pe ask people just to reach into their pockets and find pennies and things like that, and then look for the date and year that they have on their pennies, and, um, and then come up with something that's significant that happened in that year that might have impacted their life. Um, so for younger audiences, I try to have, if I'm providing pennies, I try to um, provide pennies that are no older than 10 years old from the current year so that way it's a little bit easier for them sometimes you might still have to prompt them with um, you know maybe it was a year your brother or your sister was born or you know things like that but then invite your participants to share something significant that happened to um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a penny it could be any coin you wanted to um, in the United States we clearly have pennies but I know in other areas of the globe you guys don't have pennies so it could be any coin that has a, a date a stamp date on it um, but again invite them to look for that random date and then share something significant that happened that year um, for large groups send them into breakout rooms um, in the for small groups have them share if you think people won't have access to pennies or coins, then um, just provide images of them on your screens. So here's 2012, 1990, 1946, that was the year my dad was born. Uh, 1990, that's the year I graduated high school, giving away my age a little bit there. Um, so 2002, that's the year when um, my oldest son was born. So, so anyway, but this is just a great way to, if you're building out a slide deck to share with your, on your virtual presentation anyway, then you can use those coins. Um, so um, someone just put in, um, if you're in breakout rooms, you can't see a PowerPoint. Um, I have a solution for that. So watch this. All right, this next activity, um, icebreaker playing cards, um, playing card connections. So, um, so with this one, um, what you can do is you can create six or icebreaker or debriefing questions and post them up on your screen and, um, and then ask participants to bring a deck of cards uh, to the virtual meeting um, and then ask them to, is for this particular activity, we'll use ACE through six. And then you can also show a deck of cards on a separate webcam. So let me show you, um, I'm gonna now um, share my iPad. So, um, so on my iPad, I have right here next to me, um, I am going to um, it'll load here in just a second. It takes about three or four seconds for it to find it. But as soon as it does, then um, I have here on my desk, and I'm actually gonna move my webcam a little bit right here, if you could still see me. Um, my setup that I have is I've got this tower here that has uh, my iPad in it. And so what I do then is, um, if you need to send them into a breakout room, you could still have them um, split screen their screens if you want to, and then also have this uh, have this uh, here. So over here onto the left side of my desk, then I have um, the same thing that they would have just seen on the um, on the other screen. I can have here. So and this is also if you have participants that don't have playing cards with at home, then you could just be the ones that flip the cards for them. So whoever my, whoever you would select a volunteer to go first or somebody else, then they would answer number five. What are your five favorite foods? And then they could share that way. Um, so, um, and then the next person would do the next one. You can also, if you work off a of Google Doc or something like that, you can have links in a Google Doc that people, you can have breakout room one, two, three, four, depending on how many breakout rooms you're gonna have. And then you can have a specific document that they can uh, click on the link to and it can bring up questions and things like that. So um, someone just posted, I love Bob Ross, right? And I always like to put like little silly things somewhere on the screen and I like to change it out as well. Like later, um, 
like master shifu um like he probably will have you know like so and then just see if people notice it right like so later you can bring out a different one um somebody gave me bob ross sticky notes for my birthday this year which is totally random but i it's been hysterical to have him in the upper little corner of my screen because some people notice him and some people don't and so you could do a whole exercise on what do you notice um if you wanted to okay so um, this is how you can do how you can do this, um, and that's been kind of fun to play around with a little bit. So that way, and this is a, a technique that I'm going to use a lot for um, a few of the other games that we're going to do. So I'm now going to go back to my um, to my PowerPoint slide. Let's see where it is. This way. And well, that's not what I wanted it to do, but that's all right. All right, so we're right here. All right, so um, let me go back here, clear all drugs. So after um, this, then, you know, so if you've got your participants that have their own deck, um, little playing card deck at home, then um, you can have them um, uh, shuffle their own little small deck, turn over their first card and answer the question that correlates to the card that you turned over. So, um, so that's been kind of a fun way to um, just utilize. And most people in, you know, in our current world where we're kind of quarantined and everybody's at home, most people have a deck of playing cards. And this is where you can revive that random deck of playing cards you have in that junk drawer of life somewhere that may or be missing maybe the three of hearts or something like that. You can totally revive those and you do not have to um, let them sit there and be unused anymore. So several of the playing cards activities that are in the slide deck also came from my book, uh, Playing with the Full Deck which is uh, 52 team activities using just a deck of playing cards. So that can be a uh, really great way to keep people um, connected. If you need simple props or have a very um, small budget to do things, then playing cards make for a really great uh, tool to have in your toolbox. All right, so polling services. Um, this is another um, online platform that you can use to, for instant and interactive answers to different questions. So, um, so how this works is the two platforms that I know of that I've tested out and worked is one is pollingeverywhere.com and the second one is menti.com. And this allows you to use th these platforms with both live and virtual audiences. So there's a way for you to download it into your PowerPoint presentation to where you can go live. So we'll do that next. So, but what you do is you can create your own poll and you can create questions that will give you a barometer of how people are feeling or um, what, how things are going. Um, so to test this out, if you've got your cell phone handy, um, now I'm sorry, international audience, I don't know if this will work for you, um, but for those of you that are here in the United States, go ahead and um, text the words um, all together, Michelle C, as for Michelle Cummings, um, Michelle C 499 to the number 22333. So go ahead and uh, text that now. Let me go back, sorry. Um, text Michelle C 499 to 22333. All right, and once you get there, it'll probably give you a message on whether or not you uh, have joined or not, or if you've got, got the code correctly or not. So, but basically um, this first one that we're gonna do is kind of a word cloud. And so, um, so what I want you to do is type back with one word, what is a word that describes how you are feeling today? And it's gonna populate something like this. Okay, now as soon as I advance to the next screen, it's gonna start populating. So this is live, and, uh, and so it um, is, uh, now everybody is texting in. We have 478 people in here. So it is Michelle C4992233. Look at that. Look at all that. Optimistic, inspired, energized, productive, intrigued, refreshed, drained, tired, sexy. I saw that. Okay. <laughs> Sore, tired, calm, motivated. So I love it. As, as more and more answers start to populate, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I love it. So people are texting emojis. That works too. So. 
All right, awesome. So if you think about what do you want, you know, this is a way to make it more interactive to where people can be uh, typing in these things and sending them in during your presentation. Um, we're going to do a different one next. So let me get back here. All right, now that you've still got um, your uh, poll open. So out of curiosity, how is everyone feeling right now? So type in the letter that represents your behavior right now during um, this time of isolation. So, um, or how isolated is everyone right now? A, not at all, normal routine. B, being more cautious, but still going out. C, would be going out as needed, but mostly working from home, still seeing friends and family. D, is very limited, only going out uh, when unavoidable or to support local businesses, limited contact with people. And E is full lockdown, no one in or out. So there you go. It looks like most of us are, um, you can see then the um, crazy, uh, and they, again, they keep auto-populating the percentages as soon as people um, keep um, adding in their responses. I see a couple people are feeling a little frustrated. Maybe the technology is not working for you. Um, again, um, John Losey, who is on this call now, he has been hosting several webinars on how to, as facilitators, as we as we get new into this online platform or this virtual space, how do we navigate all of these new technology things and figure out how to do this? in this virtual space. And so um, I recommend that you find um, John Losey on uh, Facebook, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be posting another one on how to do this. He's better at it than I am. And so, um, and his computer setup is way better than mine to actually be able to show you the controls. And so um, John, can you type in the message box um, or maybe post a link to your Facebook page so that way people can find you? Um, so the poll, do you, um, someone asked, can you be more clear about the poll? Do you mean to create a text to 22333 and then type in the password? So, um, so what you do, let me back up a couple slides um, just so people can see. Um, let me go back here. Okay, so how the online polls work then is, um, so you would go and set up an account at pollingeverywhere.com or at nimt.com. And once you create an account, you'll get your own unique username. Mine is michellec 499 and then once you have that, then you can go in and you can set up your own um, questions and polls and things like that. Then, um, so you'll get your unique username and that unique phone number. Um, for mine, it's 22333. And so then people would, you would put that into your presentation um, once you created your poll. Now, I did three polls in mine. Um, this one what, on the Word Doodle, just to kind of show you one of their options. This one um, that was the um, word cloud. Um, and then, um, or the second one that I did was this, um, the barometer here of, of the, the percentages and the graphs that you can see where people are at. The next one that we're gonna do is, um, is the world map. And so, um, so this one here, most online pl uh, polling platforms can also, they've got interactive maps. So there's John's, um, uh, website um, in the in the chat box there into wisdomgroup.com and um, and um, so um, yeah so someone asked the if you want to share the results of the poll um, are they can you share them from PowerPoint that you do like after the fact you can go in and you can um, you know this one here is still live if people are still um, putting in their responses, but I can go in and I can download that and then I can send it out to everybody, the, the responses as well later. Um, and then for, um, for, the, um, for the interactive map, now this one here requires that people, um, how do you share the live results? Yes, so the, you'll have to download um, the, the whatever polling service you use. I use Poll Everywhere. And so you'll have to go in and there's just, um, a download that you have to connect your um, polling everywhere to your PowerPoint. Um, and so anyway, it was a very quick and easy install. And then as soon as you do that, then in your menu bar, there is an option to add the poll into your PowerPoint presentation. And then after that, when you click, um, when you are in present, it only works when you're in presentation mode, but as soon as you're in presentation mode, then it, um, then, and people start populating, then it, it, it works. Mm -hmm. So. 
Say again. Is there a cost? Um, there is a free, um, there is a one free version where I think you can get one or two polls for free. If you want more polls than that, then you have to go in and, um, and then you'd have to pay for the service. And I think it's $15 a month, something like that, their basic plan is, so. All right, so now we're gonna move into the um, interactive maps. So, um, so online pol polling platforms, they also have interactive maps. So right now, if you exit your full screen mode and go into your internet browser, um, type in this website here, um, pollev.com slash Michelle C 499. And you can't just click on that because it's not live on the, um, on the PowerPoint. Um, let's see here. Uh, let me type it in the chat box and see if that works. There you go. So if you um, click on that, it should open up into your internet browser. And then once you are there, <laughs> once you are there, I'm gonna get clear drawings real quick. The drawing is right, it is live in the PDF. Okay, so it's live in the PDF. Um, put a pin on the map of your current location. And now um, once you do that, so this now should be live. And as people start to, um, pin, we should start to see where people are at. Look at that. We have 477 people online. That is so awesome. Look at that. We are all, look how global we are. We're all over the place. We have people in so many different countries, <laughs> a lot here in the U.S. I see, but yet our international friends are on with us as well. That is so fantastic. So whenever I do something like this, I let it sit for a minute, let people see all the bubbles um, continue because that's part of the fun, right? It's part of the interactivity is seeing it start to um, work. And and uh, and if you're struggling with the technology right now, it's just not working, you can go ahead and put a stamp or, or your um, arrow button or something like that on there as well. So that way we can see where you are as well. That's really cool. Who's on the boat? <laughs> There's several of you out in the ocean right now. <laughs> uh, John just posted in the comment section his next um, Zoom uh, play date for facilitators to kind of walk through some of these um, how to use Zoom platforms is Tuesday, March. 31st at noon Pacific time. So if you want to go and uh, click on that link and um, save it somewhere so you don't forget um, where you're supposed to be at what time, that's great. All right, I'm going to move to the next slide so we can move into, um, and I'm more than happy to um, to stay after a little ways after we stop recording the video, um, just so that way if people want to come back to this and kind of walk through it a little bit more, then I can unmute people and we can ask questions and things like that a little bit better and, and try to answer a few questions that way. All right, I am going to move to the next slide. All right, so we're gonna move into dice breakers. So, um, Dice, again, I, I, when I was trying to figure out games that we could do at home um, when people are at new, in their homes is how do I figure out how to, um, I tried to think about what are the props that people might have easy access to in their homes. And I thought, you know what, most people have a board game somewhere and they could go and rob the dice from it if they wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, um, and share my... Um, Actually, I'm going to go here again. So this one here, it might require you to send a note to your participants ahead of time to bring um, a set of dice or a dice to the uh, virtual meeting. Um, if that's not possible, then you can always roll the dice for participants. I also just recently learned that there is a website that will roll dice for you. And it's called, um, it's on random.com, which is totally random, but you can get on there and you can actually, um, if you search for the dice function and then just hit roll dice, it'll roll randomly roll dice for you. So that's a way to keep it 100% in the virtual format as well. So, um, and then you can send participants into the break room, ask each person to roll the dice, um, respond to one of the questions that they have here. And again, this is another one that if you um, wanted to um, just roll the dice for them, then you can do what I did earlier where you can um, share your second screen of some sort 
And for me, I do, um, I have an iPad stand over here to my left. And, um, and so I just show that. And I also wanna show you the difference between regular dice and um, a couple of different kinds of dice. So, and then also just so you know, right now I'm in photo, um, I'm in photo mode. So that's the playing card one. So if you wanna do uh, the dice breaker one. So this one here you can see is, um, is a little bit far away. Um, it's, so it might be hard for people to read, but you could also, you can use one or two dice. Um, for this one here, I have, if you had more than just six, you could have more dice. Also, if you think about where your dice, where your camera is, based on where you roll the dice, so that way, because if I put it way out here, someone might think they actually have a four rather than a two. So just make sure that you're rolling a dice to where your camera is kind of straight down. That will be helpful. Um, this is on the uh, photo mode of my iPad right now. So if I switch it to the video mode, it just, it, it brings it in a little bit. So um, that way I'm not mess, trying to mess with the screen and make it larger and whatnot. But that's one way that I've found to, um, and then also when you go to roll the dice, make sure that you're like, know where your hand is. So that way um, you don't have um, people so that you're not blocking, like if, you, like, like if you roll it and your hand is like this and you can't see everything, then make sure you just um, recognize where your hands are. So I try to use my right hand um, up here so that way people can see what I roll. Now hear how loud that is with the, with the regular dice. Um, I have found that if you use eraser dice, they don't make that awful noise. Um, and it doesn't make your ears bleed by the end of the presentation. So these are just, um, they're literally erasers. I got them from a company called ustoy.com and they, they were very inexpensive. I, they sold them in 144 packs. So you have to want a lot of these or, but they were all, they were very inexpensive for what they were and they come in lots of different colors, but it is, um, much nicer on the ears. Um, if you have, um, the eraser dice rather than the regular dice. So just for contrast, here's the regular dice. It's really loud um, comparatively to the um, to the eraser dice. So again, so if, if for this particular activity, I would only use one dice at a time, and uh, and then make sure everything's in the screen, and uh, and so then the next person I would select would then um, answer number three. So what is one of your favorite childhood memories? Now, of course, if you are working with kids, come up with um, something that would um, match something for them. Um, number four, if you could be a roadie for any band for a month, which band would you choose? I love that question. It's so fun to hear people's taste in music and things like that. Um, what would you cook if you really wanted to impress somebody? So, um, so and dice breakers, of course, um, you uh, so you can come up with these uh, whatever these questions are all, all on your own. I just used some clip art and, uh, and and made a template to make a bunch of questions. So and it didn't take me terribly long to do that. So um, let me go back to my. Okay, so um, again, you can either do it by um, having, if you have a small group, let everybody just um, answer right there on, this, on, the, on the screen. And then if you have a large group, you can send them into break rooms. Um, so, and also my plea to you as a, an experiential educator who has a big passion for the processing and debriefing side of the experiential pro, uh, world and activities, just remember any icebreaker that you do can also be a debriefing activity. So, um, so if you wanted to then do the same thing and change it out for um, a debriefing activity, um, if maybe if you start your virtual meeting with the dice breakers, then you can end it with the dice debrief. So that way they already know the process, but then you're getting them to talk and share about things that they learned, um, acknowledge somebody for a job well done in the meeting, what were some good ideas they heard, um, what were something that pushed them outside their comfort zone, things like that. So, so you can customize whatever your questions are for whatever group you have and, uh, and still, make it, um, uh, still make it interactive. All right, food for thought. This one is in the handout. This is one that was um, contributed to the Teachable Moment book. Um, that was the first book I ever wrote. It's all on processing and debriefing activities. I wrote it with uh, Jim Kane and Jennifer Stanchfield. 
and um, and food for thought was originally a, a, a debriefing activity and I've adapted it a lot to if I go to a, a camp or something like that and make it a placemat just print this out onto pieces of paper and then make it the placemat and then do an interactive discussion during lunch so um, my kids summer camp right now um, although it's not summertime and it's um, and they're not in camp my kids summer camp is actually doing um, lunches with their summer camp staff right now when they know everybody is home and is in isolation. So they've been doing um, noon meetings and lunches with camp staff. So, so I sent them this activity that they're going to try out, but they send this to everybody ahead of time, um, have them print it out, and then have everyone fill out the um, prompts on, the, uh, on, on this here. So on the plate, what are all the things that are on your plate right now? Um, on the fork, what are some new things that you'd like to take a stab at? Um, on the napkin, what are some things that protect you? So have each person go through and fill out these different things and then um, either have each person share or again, send them into break rooms. Um, or you could just bring actual utensils to your video call and provide the placemat um, in your slides as a visual or something like that. So. All right, thumb balls. Now thumb balls, for those of us in the experiential field that have been doing team building for a while, you probably have seen a thumb ball, you know what a thumb ball is. And even though this is usually an in-person activity with a little out of the box thinking, you can actually do this virtually. So it does require that you have a thumb ball in your possession, um, but really what this does is it helps make your virtual feelings or your sessions feel a little bit more interactive. So, and if you don't have one, you can totally make one. Just use a beach ball, a Sharpie, something round that you have in your house. And what you do, what a thumb ball is, it's, it's a ball that has 32 pre-printed panels on it. And so you catch it, or you throw it, you catch it, and then you look under your thumb, and then you answer the question that's under your thumb. So, um, so what I love about this is that it, it really does make it feel more interactive. So you're going to have to throw it up in the air, catch it yourself, look under your thumb, announce the questions that the participants will answer. But then, you know, because you've got your um, the option to see everyone in your um, in your gallery view, then you can pick or uh, who goes next or after somebody goes, let's say if I had um, Luke Nipper, um, I said, all right, Luke, I'm going to have you do um, what's your funniest cartoon? You know, if you were to answer that question then, and everybody, when everybody could hear, then after you're finished, you could pretend to throw the ball to somebody else and say, I want to throw it to John Losey or whoever else. And then he would be, and then I would toss it and answer. I'm like, all right, John, then you will, um, what's the coolest gift you've ever gotten? And then you would answer that question. So again, it's a way to keep, um, to, to do connection before content um, in a way that feels interactive, even though we're all sitting by ourselves. Um, so we carry a full line of thumb balls in the training wheel store. Um, and one of them what we have is a numbers thumb ball. So if you had something like this, or if you even have a beach ball and you want to put numbers on a thumb ball uh, or on any ball, then you can, um, when you're creating your slide deck, just just type out questions one through seven or one through 12 of what people could answer. And then you only have to have one ball instead of 27 balls. So that's a way that you could do it as well. Um, so, um, so that's thumb balls. And we have literally every kind of thumb ball that you could think of. We have debriefing thumb balls. We have icebreaker thumb balls. We have conflict resolution thumb balls. Um, I have found that people like fidget tools. And so when we, when we do eventually get to go back to playing with people in, in person, um, I find that having something in, um, in people's hands can be really helpful. Um, and again, these, I've actually tried disinfecting these just so that I know um, that later when we get back and we're more germ conscious that, um, that you can use hand sanitizers on these. And it didn't, um, so far it has not dulled the color or ruined the fabric or made it smear or anything like that. I can't say the same thing about a beach ball. I don't know, I haven't tried that yet, but. Um, but that should, um, but that's something that I've been testing out a little bit. All right, using objects or pictures as check-ins. Go through that junk drawer of life that you know you have and find a bunch of metaphors. So this here also is um, a picture of my desk, um, or you could also use um, photos. And these are all the things that, I have two boys, they are now 16 and 18, but um, so these, now all these tool, tools here that you see in that picture are right here in front of me um, on my desk. So now all their old little trinkets and toys and things like that are now training tools. And so I use these often when I am um, doing the virtual um, platform now. So again, I would just do the same thing that I did before. 
I would share my iPad and um, and so scroll down. There we go. Mirror. And basically what my iPad is doing is it's mirroring. Um, um, I, I have to go into the, um, I think it's the Bluetooth function and it mirrors that it asks me which screen I want to share. And so for this particular one, I'm sharing my, um, um, sharing my iPad. Um, so, um, so anyway, and then I just make sure that whatever I want people to select from are, is here in view. And, uh, and then this is where, um, if you wanted to with your, um, with your people, they could use the, uh, annotate, um, function with the, this is why I love the arrow button because then people can, um, you know who has selected which item because their name is included with the arrow, like just like that, Christoph, Jeremy, um, Graham. So, um, so if you're using that, then um, people, and one thing with the arrow button though that I, um, I have found that as soon as somebody else clicks on their arrow, then it, um, it makes the other arrows go away. So that's one function that um, it works if you want one person to go at a time. And so, um, so that way then, but if you want everybody to click on things, then you would have to use the stamp feature of Zoom. So, all right, so let me go back to my screen. There we go, all right. All right, annotate and clear. All right, quit, quit uh, clicking on things for a moment. We'll get back to this um, annotation bar. And then again, send them into break rooms or um, just leave it as a, as a large group. So, all right. Um, and then here's how you could um, do the same thing with using um, images. Um, like go, if that's where the uh, royalty free websites can be really great. I put a couple of them in the handout that are royalty free uh, sites. So that way we're not violating copyright, even though we're trying to do this new virtual world thing. I think it's still important that we um, not violate people's copyrights and things like that. But this is be where, um, you know, select an image that best describes how you're feeling today. Um, so again, you can put your prompts at the top, add a couple photos. And again, you can use this as icebreaker check-ins. You can also use it as a debriefing tool to where um, you can have people then chime in and say, um, pick an image that best describes something that you learned today or a reflection that you have or something that's on your mind or something like that. All right, uh, creative categories is another one to where if you want people to, um, you know, again, do this shared interactive thing is using the annotation bar is, all right, now that we're all working from home, check one of these boxes. Have you made a new recipe? Have you started a home project? Are you going stir crazy? Have you deep cleaned everything? So this is one that if you are not the greatest at um, creating PowerPoint slides, if even that is new for you, then um, this is just, it's just text box, text boxes. So that way it's, you don't have to add graphics and things like that and it just pops up on the screen. So um, all of us working from home, um, there are all kinds of new things going on, getting creative with the food that we have in our freezers and our refrigerators and things like that, going stir crazy. Uh, one thing I do like that we can at least still get outside, <laughs> all the things, I love someone is doing all the things, that's awesome. <laughs> oh. All right, cool. I'm going to clear these, move on to our next slide. Okay, we're going to get into some kind of out of the icebreaker phase now and go into um, brain break and movement activities. So it is now 1243 already. So we've been sitting for a really long time. And for me, I think it's really important for us to think about um, making sure that we're creating brain breaks and doing movement activities in our meetings as well. So um, so what we're going to do next then is, um, so there's one additional thumb ball um, that is really dedicated to movement, and it is the move your body thumb ball. So, um, oops, hold on. So the move your body thumb ball is one just like the um, icebreaker thumb ball we saw a little bit ago. This one here has lots of different movement things on it. So for example, twist your waist from side to side, kick a goal and cheer, uh, flap your wings and soar. Trust, um, let's see, I did that one. Drive a race car and turn the wheels sharply. Ride a bicycle, uh, paddle a canoe, wiggle your fingers, your nose, and your toes. And so what I like this about this one is I, 
Um, I like to use this one a lot if you've just been teaching something really heady for a while or your participants have been sitting for a long time. Then um, this is one where I encourage people to move about um, five or six feet away from their screens. So that way when people stand up, that we're not seeing them from the um, just their um, waist area. So then when people stand up, then you can toss the ball to yourself and then announce what you want everybody to do together. So this one, um, the one my thumb landed on was row, row, row your boat. And then all of us will do it together. Okay, so row, row, row your boat. All right. And if you have it on gallery view, it's awesome because then you can see everybody doing this all together. Okay, all right, next one is um, hop with two feet. All right, next one is uh, paddle a canoe. Okay, we're all doing that, we're all paddling a canoe. Um, ride a bicycle, pretend to ride. Okay, and then the next one, um, cast your pole and reel in a fish. Now I'm a fly fisher, so my casting looks a little different than yours. So, all right, and serve a tennis ball and swing the rap racket. <laughs> Right? So then what I love about that is we only did maybe five or six of those. And now I've just re-energized the brain just a little bit. Got people out of their chairs and uh, just, and that re-energizes, it puts a little blood flow into, into everybody and, uh, and it really does allow the, the brain to just wake up a little bit. All right, this next activity we're gonna do is kind of a version of Have You Ever. Okay, so Have You Ever is the game that um, if you're in the experiential world and you've been facilitating team building activities for a while, have you ever is usually people stand in a circle and there's one person that will make a statement that says, have you ever, and then it's, they make a statement about something that they have done before. And then if other people have done that, then they would move off of their um, marker squares and then they would um, scramble to find a new square and then there's one person left over. I always use a red spot as the hot spot. That's the next person that goes. So that way we don't have somebody out in the center, um, but they're uh, included in, as a part of the circle. So the next person on the hot spot then would say the next have you ever. So, but you can also do this um, virtually, right? So stand up, have you ever eaten sushi, right? So you're getting everybody to stand up if you've eaten sushi. And again, if, you're, if you have everyone with gallery view, they could see other people as well. Have you ever, and then you can have people sit back down. And then if they've done it, have you ever worn pajamas to a virtual meeting? Then you can have people um, stand up on that and then sit back down. And then you can move to your next one. Have you ever slept in till noon? Okay, and then sit back down. Have you ever, oops, I missed one, been to Mount Rushmore, if anyone even knows where that is, South Dakota, that's where that one is, okay. Have you ever gone hiking? So again, so that's one, and there you go, I see several of you using the annotation button, so that works as well. Um, so, I wonder why that's doing that. All right, I want that. All right, so that's one way you can do it um, with the um, with just using a clicker. I mean, so that way you can back away and you can do um, the things that you want to in your presentation. Um, and then here's a way that I've tweaked it. I did it this one time as a keynote for um, a group of experiential educators at the Association for Challenge Course Technology Conference. And I did a tech talk for them. And uh, what I wanted to do in, um, in that particular instance was to really start to get them thinking about we as professionals in the challenge course industry, we in the team building um, industry, we often ask people to step outside their comfort zones. So I thought, how could I make this in a, when I had a thousand people in the audience, how could I, um, how could I make it to where I could have everybody thinking about how do we stretch ourselves and, um, and then I also used it to introduce the concept of our comfort zones, our stretch zones, and then our danger zones, how sometimes pushing people a little bit too far um, is where new learning doesn't play, take place when we're in the danger zone. It takes place when we're in the stretch zone. So I took this version of have you ever, what we just did, the standing up, and then I applied different levels of risk to the questions. So some of them were surface level sharing, others were a little bit deeper and others were really deep. And I told people that you can choose to stand if they apply to you or not. 
Um, if you don't want to, that's fine too. But, um, and then again, in the virtual format, we'll we would have everybody standing as, as well. So if you have speakers on your computer, um, go ahead and make sure that you can, that, well, I guess the volume's up because you're listening to me right now. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so um, let's see here. Is there someone is saying, if you go to gallery view um, for the, um, for your screen. So um, if you hit gallery view, it will show you, I think it'll show you, oh wait, don't do that yet. Um, it will show you at least, I think the max, I don't know, if you went to full, I can't, don't go to full screen with it because you need to be able to see the slide deck. But if you expand it at least on one side of your computer screen, you'd be able to at least see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 or so people is what I can see. So, um, so what I did was I put a song to the, uh, for these different activities and, or to these different prompts that you're about to do. And I chose a song that kind of talks about, I just want to live my life. So I was really intentional about the song that I chose. And then I just hit play and the song plays out for the entirety. So it's about two minutes long. It's about a two minute activity. Um, and then again, if, so when you see the prompt, you're going to choose to stand if it applies to you and stand for about three seconds. And then after you're done, then sit back down. And then, um, so the slides will just keep going about every eight seconds, okay? So um, so someone just put in the, um, in the comment section, if you go to the full screen mode, then you can choose the gallery mode. View options, try the side-by-side -side view. You can pin, Michelle, you can pin me as one of the screens if you want to, once you're in uh, the gallery view as well. And if you want to turn off your annotation button, then there's just that little red X um, on, on, this, on the um, annotation bar that will turn off your um, annotations. All right. Um, okay. So, so, and here's what, how I introduced it to the challenge course industry, because I wanted to use a metaphor that was really, um, that was really poignant for them. I guess that's the word I was looking for. So carabiners in the challenge course industry, carabiners are the tool of choice that we use whenever somebody goes high on a ropes course. And of course, carabiners are most vulnerable when they are open. And, uh, and coincidentally, so are people, right? All right. So this next screen, as soon as I start it, it's going to start the activity. So, and the song should start playing. So again, if you, um, um, if you want to play along, back up from your screen about, uh, five or six feet so we don't so that way we see more of you standing and sitting and we'll go from there. All right. Now I can't So that way we can uh, um, see a fresh screen. Uh, <laughs> 
I love this song too. So music credits go to the Colors. I've never heard of them before, but this song is called One More Thrill. So, um, so anyway, for those of you, a few of you are like, how do I get rid of my annotation? So if you click on your annotation button, there's a clear button, a little trash can, and that will clear all your drawings. So you can clear my draw, or actually I might have clear all drawings, but you can clear my drawings in that little trash can button up there. So, and then that way you can start over. So that might be maybe an important feature for people, for you as the facilitator to point out is that after you make a mark and you want to um, remove that mark, then clear all the, clear your drawings afterwards. All right, so, um, so I'm sure, um, so that there, um, you know, again, that's standing and sitting. Some of them were funny, some of them were a little more serious. So you can, it's just a way to, I wanted to show you an, an adaptation of that one. So that way you could see where it, um, see how you can adapt just from a have you ever to now I can tweak it and change it, make it be something a little bit deeper if I wanted it to be. So, all right, I'm gonna clear all drawings right now and then move on to our next slide. All right, so here's another one that you can do. Um, so I'm gonna actually, um, on this one, set your screen to full presenter mode to where you can see my face really big right now on camera, okay? So um, go to the, if you go to the gallery view, but you've got me pinned, then um, go to presentation mode or to a presenter mode where you can see the presenter really well, okay? And I'll wait for a moment to get everybody there. And then once you're there, I want everyone to go ahead and make the okay sign with your hand like this, okay? I'm gonna actually stop sharing for a moment and that might actually make me big. Did that make me much larger? Okay, all right, awesome. Okay, so everyone go ahead and make that okay sign. And what I want you to do is everyone just take that okay sign and just put it right on your chin. All right, now most people's chins are down here. <laughs> all right, so how many of you followed what I did rather than what I said? Yeah, so um, that is a quick one. I do that one often um, when I'm trying to get people to think about how our action, people will follow what we do rather than what we say. And that has been the perfect one. Now I know in different parts of the world, maybe the okay sign isn't the most awesome sign. So you can play with different hand signals if you want to. Everyone take your thumb and put your thumb on your, you know, everyone take your thumb and put it on, right on your chin. But you say chin right when you put it on your cheek. And, um, and most people will follow what you do rather than what you say. So it's one of those that it's, um, it's literally a 15 second or 30 second activity, but it really can have um, kind of a big bang for your buck because um, that right there is a, just a fantastic metaphor around, um, around how people will follow what you do rather than what you say. And I sometimes bring in different research um, around uh, mirror neurons and how our brains are literally wired to mirror the behavior that we see in others. And so when you're, if you're leading a leadership program or something like that, this is a fantastic um, little quick mini exercise that you can do that really does point out um, and emphasize that people will absolutely do what you do um, rather than what you say. So, all right. Um, so um, here's another quick activity that you could do. It's kind of an icebreaker, but it also involves some movement is to send participants into breakout rooms into pairs and have them change three, three things, like have them study their partner's appearance for just a few moments, um, and then uh, tell one of them, one person will go first, instruct them to turn off their video function for just a brief moment and change three things about their immediate appearance. 
And then when they turn their video function back on, then their partner has to try and guess what three things they changed. Um, so, and you could even allow your, the other partner to maybe take a screenshot before they turn off their video. So that way they really have a good, they can be, while the other person is changing the three things, they can take that time to kind of um, really study what they look like. So, um, so here in this picture here, I took these yesterday, but um, so the three things I changed, anybody throw in the comments section there, what are the three things you think I changed <laughs> or mark up my face, whatever. <laughs> Um, yep, I, my canoe necklace, I had just pushed it to the back. My hair, of course, I pushed over. And then um, my, I, my earring, I had taken off one earring. So, so, so anyway, so that is, um, that's the one way that you can do it. Um, so that's just a really short, quick activity that you could do with people. Um, and that one, again, kind of more in the, it just creates a little moment if you've been teaching something for a long period of time that's kind of heady and you just need people to kind of get into a creative space or maybe you want them to focus on this next thing we're going to go into. It requires a lot of focus. So before we go into focusing, I want you to start getting into that mode of really paying attention to the little things and, uh, and see what, um, what, what, what they, what they recognize in an activity. So you're surfacing the behavior through the activity and now you can go in and you can dive into content. So, all right, um, so now um, we're right at the one o'clock mark and I assumed that I wouldn't get through everything in the one hour. So, um, so at this point, I know several people are saying goodbye in the chat room and, and ducking out. Um, I'm gonna keep going so that way um, we can get it all recorded. And then um, when I move forward again, I'll post a link so you can come back in and you'll know at that 60 minute mark, you can um, just um, pop back in then if you need to. So I am gonna keep going, don't worry. So. Um, um, so someone just asked the question, how do you get people into pairs and groups for the breakout rooms? That's a feature that only the facilitator has, the host has. And so anyway, the, on your host bar, there is a way to send people into, um, into breakout rooms and you can have it be, um, random or you can um, manually assign. Um, John will likely cover that in his, um, in his presentation, his Zoom presentation, um, next Wednesday, if you want to log into that one. Um, is there a limit to the number of breakout rooms? No, there's not. Um, they can, um, I don't believe so. Um, and so you can put people in pairs, you can put people in groups of six, you can do work teams of 10, you can do three, you can do whatever. You, you, and it's pretty easy to quickly uh, make that happen in the, in the function. So, all right. So now we're going to dive into a little bit more of, um, why, 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 why? Okay, hold on. I'm going to jump out and jump back in. My slides are just automatically going and I don't want them to do that. So, all right, so why are they doing that? Does someone magically have control of my computer now? Maybe, who knows, it's the internet. So, all right, so understanding behavior preferences. Um, this particular activity here is, um, is one that I have used a prop called the pocket processor and um, and so this particular prop is um, one that, it was one of the first ones, even before I had training wheels, it is, um, it, it is one of the first tools that I purchased. And what it is, it's a deck of cards that have the yin and the yang symbol on them. Now, when you hear the yin and the yang symbol, it usually means that you've got two opposites. It doesn't mean you've got a positive and a negative. It doesn't mean you have one that's right and one that's wrong. Um, it just means you've got two opposites of things. So what I love about this, when I used to do this in the classroom version, what I would do is I would have everybody, um, I would put a line down the center of the room and, uh, and then I would have people come and stand on the line. And so the line down the center of the room would be the line down the center of the yin and the yang symbol. And so, um, so anyway, and then I would read off the two sides and I would have people uh, first select a side that they, uh, which best, which behavior most fit them. And then uh, to pick a degree, if the line had a value of zero and it went from zero to one, two, three out to the walls on either side, um, the further away from the center you are, the more you prefer that behavior. 
And so, um, so that is one that I love it. I, I use DISC often in my, in my work. So it's one of those um, behavioral assessments, Myers-Briggs, True Colors. There's a lot of them out there. My personal favorite is DISC. I use that in my Personified Leadership Program um, that I do all the time um, with my business partner, Angela Siebley. And that's a whole leadership program that we have designed. And, and one of the behavioral assessments that we use in that is the DISC program um, or DISC profile. So, um, so what I do um, with this one is uh, this particular activity, it's my favorite for helping understand different behavior preferences and works well with those different, um, I don't know why my slides are doing that. It's totally driving me crazy. Um, so it uh, works well with those different behavioral assessments and it is also my favorite staff training tool to do. I know a lot of people here on might be working the summer camp industry and things like that. If you, this is one that I wish all organizations would do as soon as um, they get a new group of people together. And so, um, because what better way to get to know your, the people that you're gonna be working closely with than to do an activity like this. So, um, so what I do then for the virtual format, here's how I've changed it. I basically, instead of put a rope down the center of the room or a line down the center of the room, I put a line on the center of my screen. And then I just put my variables here from one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then I list um, at the top, I'm a careful planner or I'm more, more spontaneous. And again, then you could have people mark where you would place yourself, any of any of those marks. Now, before I, um, I, I thought I really was hoping that the annotate button with the, um, with the arrow would work just because then you could see everybody's names. But again, as soon as one person clicks, um, it makes the other arrows go away. So that unfortunately won't work. So I'd probably, if I were facilitating this, then I would have to um, go in and ask. I'm like, okay, so who is this heart right here? And, um, and there's also in the presenter mode, there is a, um, a highlighter or a spotlight. So I can use this um, all right, who's this heart right here? And uh, share with us um, what places you right there. How does that show up for you in your day to day? What does being a careful planner look like? And things like that. Okay. So, and then after that, then you could um, then move to your um, to your next slide. Uh, I think before I speak or I talk as I'm thinking, and then have everyone you know everybody would place themselves wherever they would find themselves then. So what I like about it from um, if I were a team leader and if this was my team and I was doing this, I'm like, oh, it looks like I have a lot of, it looks like maybe I have a little bit more percentage of people that I talk as I think before I think before I speak type of thing, right? So it helps me know what do I have more of? Do we have, are we balanced on that as a team or are we imbalanced on that? How does that work? All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear the drawings from this one and then move to the next, um, to the next slide. All right. So I avoid conflict or I confront conflict. And again, I can then pick people. I'm like, all right, Daniel, um, where are you at? Um, how did, what places are you here? So actually that's a way, instead of doing the hearts, you could actually have people type in their names. There is a, a, a text function. So if you wanted to use that um, text box, then you could type your names in. That works perfect. So instead of the arrow with the, um, with the name on it, you could have people use that text box. So the text box is right next to the stamp and the um, drawing feature. Um, if you click text, it'll open up a little tiny text box and then you can type your name in there. And then that would help people, um, help you know where everyone has placed themselves. So then I can ask specific people, all right, Deborah, where would you, what places you, how does this show up for you in your day to day and things like that. So. So this is a, a great way to still do some of that um, more direct work that we do, um, you know, with with our um, with our participants or with our client groups, to where we can still get to some of those exact same issues, um, exact same activities, but we have to but tweaking it for the virtual format. All right, let's see here. Okay, so. Um, Here's another activity that I talked briefly a little bit about the um, comfort zones a little bit earlier. And so this next activity um, is one that, another way that I've tweaked, uh, an activity that I do in person with the virtual world. So do you ask participants to step outside their comfort zones? Uh, most of us probably do. So this activity here, I'm gonna go back into presentation mode, see if it's still in auto. I would really like it to not be. Um, 
Okay, cool. So um, first what I do is basically, so this, this activity here, the comfort zone bullseye is what I call it. And um, I've made this really cool big tarp for training wheels that has the three zones. And I use the um, metaphor of the stoplight, whereas green means that's my comfort zone, yellow means that's my stretch zone, and, um, and red means that's my danger zone or my, uh, or my, my, my panic zone, right? And so um, I usually, what I do is I, um, if when I get to play with people in person, I walk through several different scenarios around physical risk first, and then I go to emotional risk. And, um, and what I find that does is before I've even done one activity with people, it helps build empathy and builds perspective uh, with the group. So, um, so, so how I have tweaked it and changed it for the, um, for the virtual world, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawings for a second. Um, is, um, and so I basically just took that graphic and I'm like, all right, tell me what are some behaviors um, that you realize when you're in the comfort zone, what are some things, and you don't have to um, do this now, I'm just gonna describe it, but um, what are some behaviors, some things that, that, that show up when you're in your comfort zone? Um, and then do the same thing for the stretch zone and then do the same thing for the danger zone. So um, walking through those, and then what I do is, um, when I want people to do the activity, I have them again, click on the annotation button, either the arrow button or the text button would actually work really well, and then click on the bullseye where you would place yourself for the different scenarios. So, um, and then this is how I do it then for, um, then I would start with some, and I usually start with physical risk because I find that it's a lot of times easier for people to, um, to share things about physical risk more than they would on the, um, on the emotional risk. So I would start with one like riding in the car without a seatbelt on. And then what I would do is I would, if I were facilitating this with a group, I'd say, all right, Diego, I see that you're in your comfort zone on that. Tell me a little bit about that. How does that show up for you? And then Nico says, I see that you're here in the stretch zone. What, uh, what places you in stretch zone on that? And then I'd say, and so I usually pick one person from each of the three zones to kind of share a little bit. It's like, why are you in that position and um, and how does that um, how does that make you feel what are some things that show up for you and things like that so that way then we're um, and with that and then I also point out like see how we have this one thing for some that are in your comfort zone it's not a big deal for you like this are like ah, I used to write I usually write standing up in the in the truck seat next to my dad all the time right so for you that's not a, it's not necessarily anything that is um, gonna stretch you too much but look, we have people in our exact same group here that are in their danger zone, right? Like, so that this is really something that they struggle with. So, um, so anyway, so what I find, so then you can have that conversation. Just because it's easy for you doesn't mean it's going to be easy for everybody, right? All right, I'm going to clear drawings on this one, and um, and then I would click to, oops, and then I would click to the next one. So, um, walking along the edge of a cliff, people can place themselves comfort zone, stretch zone, danger zone. Some of you are off the charts even, right? And again, so I would have people, I would pick one person from each of the three zones and have them share with a large group. All right, I'm gonna clear them for this one, clear. And then move on to the next one. How about shopping at the grocery store knowing there's a confirmed COVID-19 case in your area? Where does that place you? And you in your comfort zone, your stretch zone, or your danger zone? All three for somebody, yeah. So if you're way off the chart, yeah. So, and then after I walk through a few of the physical risks ones, okay, I'm gonna stop one for this one. I'm gonna clear all drawings and then I'm gonna move to the second, to the next one. Um, and so then, um, then I go to a, a emotional risk. How about singing a song in front of a group of people? Where would you place yourself on that one? Comfort zone, stretch zone, or danger zone? All right, nice. So again, you can see some people way off the charts. Other people, look at them smack dab in the middle of their comfort zone. That means you have given talent. You have talent in that area and it's not a stretch for you. Other people, full on panic zone, right? All right, I'm gonna clear drawings for this one. Move on to the next one. Sharing stories about your family. Where would you place yourself there? <laughs> Big arrow right in the comfort zone. Awesome. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear them for this one. Look, lots of people in the comfort zone on that one. That's awesome. All right, um, clear drawings for this one, and then I'm going to move on to the next one. 
facilitating virtual team building activities. Does that put you in your comfort zone, your stretch zone, or your danger zone? Oof. I was very curious about this one to see where everybody's out. I see stretch zone for a lot, a couple of you in your danger zone, a few of you in your comfort zone, that's good. All right. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawings for this one. All right, so, so once we do get to start playing with people again in real life, um, there are lots of ways you can do this activity. This is just how I've tweaked it for the virtual platform. Um, but before I made this really big fun fancy tarp, I used to just draw one up on the, on a, um, on the flip chart with markers and whatnot. Um, and I also have made this into a tabletop version. So these same little toys and things like that that I use for my, um, for my pick an object to describe how it, as check-ins. I also use them sometimes let people um, choose avatars so that they can place their little person on the tarp. And so I've made it a tabletop version as well. Um, or if you don't, if you wanna do the live in person, I like the movement to be able to see how far away people are. I really like that when, um, when we're able to do in-person activities, but you could also just put you know, ropes down in the center of a circle if you wanted to as well. So um, that's lots of different ways that you can, um, you can do the same activity um, and just give some good examples, how you can do it virtually, how you can do it in person, in small groups, in larger groups, uh, things like that. All right, let's dive into a few problem solving um, activities. And um, so tangrams is one that I was trying to figure out, I'm like, all right, what could we do, have people do like in small groups and things like that. So the tangram activity, um, in the handout, there is, um, I, I gave you a couple different options for, um, for different templates that are already in there. But this is another one where you'll have to have your participants just instruct them to print it out and cut out the tangram pieces um, ahead of time at home. Um, and then again, you can divide people into pairs and just and one person um, describe the design and then to the other person and then they have to try to do it. Um, and then they switch roles. Another way you could do it is you could show a design for 20 seconds if everybody had their pieces with them. And then, um, and then you could move, um, and then they try to um, guess, or they try to um, figure out after you've shown it for, um, for a couple seconds. So if you do a quick Google search on Tangram um, templates, you're gonna find a ton of them out there. So, um, so anyway, here's the, the colored version that is in the template or in the um, handout that I gave you. Um, but then also there's, um, I also put a blank one in in case you wanted to um, go ahead and print on your own colored cardstock or things like that, um, or just do some basic black and white. Um, they're a lot harder if you do the basic black and white ones. So that way you, um, th that way you don't have um, the colors because the colors make it much easier. So um, so anyway, and then what you could do, um, I'll go ahead and share my iPad again. I'll share this. And I've got, um, so if you have, um, again, if sending people into breakout rooms, if they have their webcam, if they're on their phones or things like that, then, um, then they could direct the, the um, they could, one thing you can do um, with the, um, annotation features is that if you have two people working on one um, one of these by them uh, together if they just used the um, the arrow feature you could actually use it wait I can't do that let's see here here we go okay so if I want let's say if I was working with somebody I would say hey um, I want you to move this piece and I want you to um, put it closer to that piece right and I'm like okay so then someone could move it closer like okay now take this piece and move it over here Right, so then they could move it over here. All right, and then take your blue piece and then put your blue piece over by your yellow piece. Um, so that's one nice thing that the um, arrow feature does is that it every time you click it, it moves to a different spot, whereas the stamp feature just leaves that mark there forever until you go in and clear things. So that's so that's one way um, that you can use it that really helps. Um, make it to where then you can, you can have people select specific uh, pieces and things like that. <laughs> Clearly, I don't know how to put it back into a square, but, that is, uh, but that's what, just to show you how that works, that's how you can do it. 
All right, I'm gonna go back to, um, let's see here. Um, this is, I printed these onto cardstock. I personally like cardstock just because it's a little bit um, thicker, but this is, I printed on a regular piece of paper and these are just fine as well. So you don't have to have fancy cardstock if you don't, especially if you're instructing participants to do this, not everyone's gonna have a nice um, stash of cardstock at home. So, but that's regular pieces of paper there. All right, go back to my screen. All right, get 20. This one here is a really awesome um, problem solving activity that you can send, um, that you can have your groups do. So this is another one where you're gonna have to have each participant bring uh, a deck of playing cards to the virtual meeting, or you could provide images of the cards like here on the screen. Um, and basically this, this activity here is from my Playing With a Full Deck book. And this is my favorite small group activity. So this one you could send groups into break rooms again and um, have them um, do it. And what only one person really needs cards, um, unless if, if everybody does, sometimes it's helpful to move them around and be able to see them. So, but this one basically is, um, it's a math challenge that you're gonna have them do. And you need five different values of cards. So if you look at this picture here, you've got the king card, a three, a two, a five, and an ace. So, um, and King, the face cards have a value of 10 and the aces you could have the one or 11 if you wanted to. Um, but basically you have to tell them they have to um, use all five playing cards of different values, meaning I couldn't have a King and a 10 in the same deck, in the same um, group of five because those would both have values of 10. But so using five different playing cards of five different values, you have to come up with an equation using all five cards where your final answer is the number 20. Okay, so for example, if I were looking at these five cards, I could go, um, okay, the number 10, 10 times three is 30, um, 30 divided by two is 15, 15 plus five is 20 times one is 20. So I always give them an example first to show them kind of what you said, so then I'm like, oh, okay, and then I could totally um, switch up the cards again. So um, if I were doing this, here, let me actually share back to my iPad again, and I could show you, Share that. I think it's working. Yep. Okay. So let's see here. I need five playing cards. So that was one. Now, if you're like, wow, she did that really fast, I totally came up with it ahead of time. So just so you know, if you're like, wow, she's good at math. Um, I used to say that I wasn't great at math, but um, but now I am not so bad at it. Um, and it, but it's because I now do math activities on a regular basis with playing cards because I teach games for a living. So, um, but oops, that ha now that would be wrong, right? Because I have two number eights, right? So that's not um, awesome. So I need a different playing card. All right. So, um, so it could be then if I had any random um, playing cards, I would then have to try to come up with um, with a deck. Now, here's a facilitator trick that I use um, because I played this game enough times. I now can look at a deck of cards pretty quickly and come up with an equation that equals the number 20 pretty quickly. Um, but here's what I do. Here's a couple of tricks that I do. I try to whittle it down to the, the smallest numbers possible. So right now I've got a 10 and an eight. Those are pretty big numbers to work with. So what I do is I'll like, all right, 10 minus eight is the number two. So now I only have the number two to work with. Um, five minus four is one. Um, so I might not have quite enough there. So that's two, or if I went four plus, uh, let's see here. Ooh, I could get 21 there. So four times five or four plus five is nine uh, times two is t it would be 18 plus three would be 21. So I'm not quite there yet. Um, or if I did um, maybe five times three is 15 plus four would be 19. Oh, that would also get me to 21. Um, right, so, so this is what groups would do in their small groups, is they would look at the, whatever challenge they've been given and try to move the cards around to where they try to come up with an equation that equals the number 20. So if everybody's working with the same, it doesn't, the suits don't really matter, but if everyone's working with the same numbers, then they can all be kind of working in their small groups. Oh, how about this one? What if we took three times four and got 12 plus five is 17? Um, minus eight is nine plus 10 is 19. That's not it. But <laughs> anyway, you know, so, um, so anyway, but again, number 20 has to be your final answer. And I've actually never met five cards that I haven't been able to come up with at least one equation. 
Okay, now what I like about this activity is that after they get their first one, tell them congratulations on your first equation. Now see how many more equations you can come up with using the same five cards where your final answer is still the number 20. And what I like about that is if you've got one group that's struggling to find even one equation and other groups, they might have got dealt a really easy hand, like we added them and we got to 20, right? So, um, so anyway, so then maybe you could, um, so then if you say give them that additional challenge, see how many more equations you can come up with, then, um, then that way they keep working while the other groups are maybe struggling to find even their first one. And this is one where you'll, you can pop into the break rooms as the host. I can pop into different break rooms and check in on people. Hey, how's it going? Have you got one equation yet? Tell me what it is. If you haven't, what are your cards? And then you can maybe try to help them a little bit. Um, maybe if you can come up with one or help them try to get their first one so they don't start feeling like they're lost or uh, things like that, that can be important. So, hey, look at all those answers in the uh, chat box. Awesome. People are starting to come up with it. So, uh, all right. Um, so that is get 20 and I love it. It's one, and so when I do this in the live version, one thing I do afterwards is I give them maybe five to 10 minutes or so in their small groups. And then I say, okay, when, when I'm about to come out and go into the, um, back into, when I want to bring them back into the large group, I say, all right, everyone pick out your favorite equation that you just created and, or came up with. And then I want you to physically present that equation back to the large group. And so then you'll, I'm like, you could be a time sign, you could be a plus sign, you could be a minus, you could be a, a divided by. So you could even do that in the virtual format, I think. You know, if one person was like, if, you know, who's gonna be responsible for what cards and, uh, you know, things like that. So you could do, if you did eight divided by four, you know, eight divided by four is two times 10 is 20 plus five, whatever your equation is, right? So, um, so anyways, but then they could, creatively present their equations back to the large group. So that can be a fun way to, um, to, to create if maybe the math thing wasn't your gift, where you're like, oh, thank God I had so-and-so in my group because they were so good at the math thing, right? Uh, but maybe then you, if you weren't good at the math thing, maybe you could be great at the presentation thing, right? So kind of taps into what are our strengths, what are our development opportunities, um, and how we can keep, um, keep it interactive in the virtual format as well. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the presentation. All right, so that's get 20. Um, Arrowhead Puzzles is another one. Um, Arrowhead Puzzles is, um, in your handout, there is another um, template for the Arrowhead Puzzles. Let me just scatter mine out here. Um, we do carry this in our online store. If you don't wanna have, um, if you don't wanna cut it out yourself, we do carry this in a vinyl um, format on the online store. But so this would be another one where they would have to print and cut out their arrowhead puzzle ahead of time. Um, tell the group that you're gonna send them into break rooms to work on the challenge um, and demonstrate what you're wanting them to do with the puzzle. Um, and then, so the challenge of this one is to use all five of the puzzle pieces provided to create the five visible, to create five visible arrowheads, okay? So, and, um, and then again, I pop into the break rooms um, as people are working to see how they're doing. Um, and this is also one where you, um, again, just like that other fit feature that I used a little bit ago, the arrow feature, to where you can click on things um, to, let's go back. Um, let me share, let me share my iPad again so you can see. Screen, screen mirroring is what I'm doing over here on my iPad as it finds it. Um, for several of you, if you have a separate webcam, you can also just share a second webcam. Um, I actually have a second one hooked up here and I can show you, but it's so old. The quality of it is so bad. Um, you might get an actually good kick out of it. So, um, but this one here, again, this is where someone's like, okay, move this one here. If you had your, um, someone that had their, um, oops, their, uh, like move this piece over by this piece and whatnot. So that's how you could use your arrow feature to, um, to do that so but this one here then um if you this is gonna be a spoiler alert if you want if you don't want the answer then look away but this is um the answer to this one of course it's in the handout but um but so groups would work together to figure this out but the answer to this what i love about it and it's got great debriefing points is that you physically only have enough pieces to make four of the arrowheads so the fifth one 
is the voided space in between the other four. And so, um, so lots of great debriefing around this is, you know, in a, whenever we go into a recession, whenever um, a lot of times people are asked to, um, you know, at companies, at schools, wherever we are, we are asked to um, do more with less, right? That is often a theme that we, that we hear. So um, how can we still create solutions? How can we still do things um, with given the resources that we have right now, if we don't have budgets to come up with more, how do we make sure that we can um, still do uh, these new things, do, do what we need to do without, th with, by thinking outside the box and figuring out what else can we do um, if we don't have additional revenue, if we don't have additional people, if we don't have all the things that we need, that we think we need to do the job, how can we still do it um, with, without the physical resource? How can we think outside the box? So that's a pretty cool activity. I like that one a lot. Um, all right, come back here. All right, um, order puzzle. Here's another playing card one. Um, this one here is, um, um, again, you'll have to instruct people to bring playing cards to their uh, to the virtual meeting. Um, tell the groups you're gonna send them in break rooms, work on a puzzle challenge, demonstrate, and demonstrate what you're wanting them to do with the cards on your screen. Um, first, and then this activity is very Sudoku-like, um, if you know the Sudoku puzzle thing. So you can see here in the um, picture on the screen, this is the solution. So to where you have, um, I used um, cards Jack, um, Jack, King, Queen, and Ace, but you can't have, um, you, you can only have one of each card value in each column or row, okay? And so, let me share my iPad again. Share my iPad. And I will get the cards set up. So I just randomly have people, I tell them to get the, get the cards that they need and then randomly shuffle the, um, shuffle their, their little deck of cards. So that way they've got a, um, a, a, they're small and they're not all in the right order. And then just have them, um, I sometimes use Bob Ross here as my like, I know how far my screen, what my, um, how far I can go outside of the, um, or what my, what my photo capabilities are so that people are just seeing what's on the screen and I don't go off screen. So, um, so then setting up all the cards. All right, so clearly this is not the correct answer because I've got two aces side by side right here. So I'd have to figure out how to get the cards. And you know, this is not one where you'd have to slide them or you can pick them up and move them, but I've got two kings here. So I'd have to figure out a different place to put a king. I don't have a king here. So again, it just becomes kind of a, a little puzzle that they have to figure out um, as, a, as a team. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Here, but I have two jacks here, right? So that's how they would figure it out, right? Kind of a little Sudoku type puzzle. All right. All right. Um, and then again, if you need to pop into breakout rooms um, to see how people are doing. The number slide. Remember this little thing that we used to get as like birthday party favors? You can also do the same thing. Um, with playing cards or just any random numbers. If you've got uh, letter tiles or something like that, you could do the same thing. Um, so um, you're gonna send them into breakout rooms. Goal is to put the cards um, in order one through 11 by sliding cards into the empty slot. So something that looks like that. So you're gonna do four across the top. Oh, those are in order, I want them in order. Um, All right. So it takes a couple seconds to transition whenever you want to show um, the other screen, but it's not terrible. And it takes a little practice. I practice a lot before this call. So, um, so again, it would just be something like this, and then you, um, you'd have people. I'm like, all right, 
slid the four down and whatnot, and they'd have to walk each other through how to do it. But, but then the goal would be try to get one through 11. So this one here uses um, 11 cards. So it's ace through jack. And then, um, so if you had your number one here, two, or you could have it actually here, number one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So then they would have to slide the cards. Um, so one and two are in the right spot. So then I would try to figure out how to move the three to where I could get that where I wanted it, um, things like that. You get the idea. So that's the number slide. Um, All right, now we're gonna go into some debriefing activities. Um, I know we've been on for a long time. We're at, at 1.30 right now. Um, I think I have three or four debriefing activities and then we'll be finished. So, um, all right, so debriefing activities. Um, just like before, I know I already mentioned this one, and uh, but the dice debrief, again, with sharing your other screen. Um, I will share you, with you, um, you can also share a webcam. So if you don't have an iPad or a second digital device, but you have a separate webcam, you can share that. So, um, but this webcam I, is so old. The quality is so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. But, uh, but again, it's. Um, but that's a way. And I just have it right now. It's sitting on my iPad, so you can see it. But um, I ordered a new um, high tech webcam. But because everybody is now working from home, everybody has ordered webcams, and I don't know if I'll ever get it, or it might get here four weeks from now. So. Um, but that's how I'm, um, so that's a way that you can also, if you don't have a second device, you can, um, if you have a second webcam, you can do that. Where's the recording going to be shared? Um, I will share it out on the Training Wheels Facebook page. You can find it there. I will also send it out in my newsletter. If you um, want to sign up for my newsletter, you can do that at training-wheels.com and just, there's a newsletter button right there. All right, so now again, remember, most icebreaker activities can be done as debriefing activities. So instructions are just the same, but now you've, you've just populated something that has um, debriefing questions rather than the icebreaker questions. And then same thing with images. Um, so on your slide deck, you can just do, what's something you learned today or something like that? Again, send them into break rooms, or if you've got a small group, you can do it all together, or ask for three or four people to share, things like that. Um, the body part debrief, this one here, hands down, pun intended, is my, is my favorite activity. Um, so it creates slides with targeted metaphors that connect with a debriefing question. Um, we also, um, at Training Wheels, we carry the body part debrief um, in, um, as little stress reliever prompts. And again, once we can start um, playing in live audiences again, these resonate so well with people. And... Um, and so anyway, again, it gives them something to kind of uh, hang on to when they're fidgeting and talking. But uh, I front load this one. Now front loading, that's a term or basically you are giving people an example of the type of answer that you want them to give. Like for example, with the brain, what's something new that you learned today? Um, you know, with the brain. And, uh, and then again, people can comment or share on different parts. The heart, what was the feeling that you experienced today? Um, for the hand, give somebody a job for a hand well done. Um, we also have uh, these in different skin tones as well. Although I will say a lot of our dark skin tone parts are uh, trapped in China right now, and I can't get them out because a lot of the factories are still shut down. But they're on their they're ordered at least. Um, you know, with the uh, lungs, how was this experience a breath of fresh air for you? Um, with the foot, identify a step in a new direction for yourself. Or maybe you stuck your foot in your mouth and said something you wish you hadn't. So there's lots of great uh, metaphors that you can use with the different body parts. And um, you can use the arrow button to highlight while people um, share or things like that. So um, just like some of the other things that we've done. Tiny campfire. This is one that I came up with. I do a lot of work in the outdoor field. And so, um, so I was like, well, you know, that's one of the, my favorite things about camping is, um, let's see here, I'm going to pause, I'm gonna stop sharing for a while. Um, so you can see me in a little bit bigger format, but, um, but you have everybody bring a candle. And um, actually, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna share this so you can see me light my, uh, so you can see me light the fire. Let's see, there's Sarah, she in here. Okay, 
there. But so then you could set up. Oops, that didn't work. Okay, go back. <laughs> Example. Oh, maybe I didn't hit. Oh, I didn't hit share yet. You gotta hit share if you want it to work. All right. Zoom. Nope. All right. Technical difficulties. Cancel. There we go. Okay. So this one here. You ask people to bring their s'more makings with them to the meeting. And, um, is it working? There we go. Okay. So I've got all my makings for s'mores here, and you can literally have people start their little mini campfire at their desk um, or their coffee table or their uh, kitchen table with their families or whatever. Have them start their little campfire and then start roasting your marshmallow. And so if we all did it together as a group, that'd be kind of cool. And, uh, but then while you're roasting your marshmallow, that's where people can share reflections or share things that they got going on or feelings or different things like that. And then eventually you can build out your s'more and, uh, and uh, after you've got your mar marshmallow all nice and roasted, right? Now make sure you go over fire safety. The last thing we want to have happen when people are confined to their homes is to burn their houses down. So you might want to go through a little fire safety, make sure everyone's being safe. But um, but anyway, that's a kind of a, a fun way to do, especially if you're in the outdoor rec field and things like this, it's a great way to kind of feel like we're still camping even though we're not right now, right? So, all right. So, um, Next, virtual labyrinth. This one here, um, I did a little search. I love the labyrinth. Um, first, I usually have to explain to people what a labyrinth is, just because for um, a labyrinth is not a maze, actually. It's, um, it, there's actually no, there's one way in and one way out. But once you go in and once you're on the path, there is no, there's no tricks or traps. And so you don't have to worry about, as you're walking a, a labyrinth, you don't have to worry about, um, getting trapped anywhere because it, they're designed to where you just, it's reflection with, um, it's action and reflection. So it's kind of a meditative um, kind of activity. And so um, in your handout, I provided a, um, a, a finger traceable um, labyrinth, but uh, we also have a tabletop version of the labyrinth that we, that I took this um, kind of this fun, big version. This is my kid's summer camp. Um, and I, I, when I had these made, I had them made on billboard material. So that way, um, and I gave it to the camp and I said, I want you to leave this outside for an entire year. And then when I come back next summer and drop my kids off next summer, I want to see the quality of it. And it almost looked brand new. Um, and so because it's made of billboard material, it's designed to weather the elements, the storms, the, the snow, the rain, the rocks, the, all that. So it makes for a cool portable. You can put it away if you want to or leave it out all the time um, if you want to as well. Um, but finger tracing labyrinths, it's another way to add some movement with reflection. Um, and then also in your handout, you can also just finger trace. You can print one off, ask everyone. And if you go and you Google um, labyrinths, you're going to find some other ones. So if you want one with a little bit smaller, um, a smaller labyrinth, not quite as big an elaborate as this, um, you can. Or I was able to find an online labyrinth. So, um, so let me get out of presentation mode here and go to my internet and I'll show you. Now the link is in the handout itself. So, um, but this um, online labyrinth, once you get here is, um, you can only, it only lets you go in um, and out. So here I am. I, it shows me at the bottom of the screen how much of the labyrinth I've finished. Um, you can, and you just basically click your way through the labyrinth. Um, now, if I, let's say, if I'm like, oh, I just wanna to go to the middle. Nope, it won't let you. You can't move directly to the heart of the labyrinth. Please go back to your path. And so you actually have to, or if I try to jump over here, I've jumped too far or too far ahead, you've gone astray, go on the right path. And so it really does make you move stick and stay on the, um, the labyrinth itself. So the link for this is, um, is in your handout, but this might <clears throat> be another way that you can do kind of a virtual closing and just let people's minds wander a little bit and uh, um, just talk about the significance of the labyrinth and things like that.
All right, closing in on the finish here. <clears throat> All right, and last one, um, advice from a pencil. Um, so this particular, um, whoops, this particular debriefing technique here is called what I call an object lesson. And the object lesson is basically, it's not you asking reflection questions necessarily, it is um, if finding something that kind of teaches a lesson through whatever it is. Now, this one here, um, I make these into postcards and I sometimes give them out, especially if I do teacher workshops and things like that. The advice from a pencil is a really great metaphor for a teacher. Um, and what I like about it is that then you, uh, you read through the advice you know, from a pencil. So you'll be able to do a great many things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hand. You will experience a painful sharpening from time to time, but you're gonna need it to become a better pencil. You will be able to correct any mistake you make, no matter how big or small. And the most important part of you will always be what's on the inside. And then you must leave your mark, no matter what the condition, you must continue to write. Right, so, so that itself, it's just kind of a cool metaphor that kind of wraps up, um, you know, for teachers in particular, or students, um, a really nice thing. So what these do is they spark discussion and reflection time. Um, and so, um, and if you go to Google search and you type in advice from a uh, dot, 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 put in whatever metaphor you want. Um, and you will, there will be all kinds of um, images and things like that that you can um, get some ideas from. So advice from a snowflake, advice from a sunflower. You can read through those if you want to on your own. Um, advice from a trout, I'm a fly fisher. So, uh, so there's advice from a trout, which are kind of cool. And then advice from a tree, stand tall and proud, sink your roots into the earth, be content with your natural beauty, go out on a limb, drink plenty of water, and remember your roots. And don't forget to enjoy the view. So again, so it's just kind of a cool wrap up piece. It's again, it's not like me asking questions and debriefing that way, but it's just a way to kind of end a, um, a time together. So, so that's all the activities that I have. Um, what I thought I would do next is um, I'm going to stop the recording here. But what I'm going to do next, for those of you that are still on, I'm going to actually send you into break rooms. And so that way then we can practice. But I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. That way we don't have um, recorded downtime of people just doing nothing in break rooms. But um, I hope this was helpful for so many of you in this new virtual world that we've been asked. Um, and I know that this is a long time to be sitting and, and going through things, but I hope it sparked a lot of really great ideas to be able to see it in action, to see how it might work. I know that some of the technical stuff you might be frustrated with, but again, we'll figure out how to uh, do that all. And, um, and again, if you have questions, there'll be some great webinars on how to do this stuff. But please sign up for my free e-newsletter if you haven't already. Um, and please uh, support small business and check out our online store if you have any uh, budget dollars and you feel like Finneman with the small business owners, we would appreciate that in this time. Um, and but first, but but before anything else, though, just please figure out ways to stay virtually connected. Um, and we can still do team building online. We don't have to be in person to do it. We can help people stay virtually connected um, through our work. So thank you so much for coming and and spending some time with me today. All right, I'm going to stop the recording and I think.